It looks good. It's big and heavy and shiny, so it uh, goes nice up there. Back-to-back -back wins, and now you're back home. Do you feel a little momentum building for this team and this program? Well, you know, yeah, after last week, but every week's a new week, and, you know, we, we take a little bit of time to enjoy it, and and then it's back to work. We got a, a tough game this week. Uh, New Mexico coming to town. They're a quality football team in all areas and uh so we put the past behind us but uh you know it's gratifying for the kids to to have some success because of how hard they've worked um again it's validation if they work hard you know wasn't perfect by any means but to get a win on the road uh, against our rivals always nice uh, but we can get a lot better and we need to be a lot better Well, yeah, you know, it's um, there's two different things. Obviously, New Mexico with the option, it's um, it's very difficult to stop because it's very difficult to to practice it. You know, simulate it and practice it to speed and the precision that they run it with is very difficult. And uh, so, our scout team players this week, it's going to be really critical that our show teams uh, we put guys in position to give us a good look, and because um, they're tough to stop. Well, it's it's great. You know, I hope people come back. I think it's great uh, for people to take or have pride in their school and uh, hopefully the football program that we're, they'll come back and be a part of it and help fill the stadium and create some energy. And uh, so it's always nice to see people come back. As far as the football team's concerned, our routine will stay the same, you know, but, um, but it is always nice to see um, former faces, whether it be students or or teammates, players uh, come back and be a part of it. So um, we hope to do our job and make it a, a positive night for everyone. Well, I didn't enjoy winning like that because uh, we didn't play very well in the second half offensively. I was pretty frustrated at the end of the game because offensively we we didn't do some things we needed to do. I thought our defense played really solid, um, even though we can tackle a little bit better. Um, we're usually a pretty sound tackling team, and we missed some tackles in the game. But the uh, field position flipped on us, and, the, and, and we couldn't get it out of there. And... A lot of it had to do with us just not doing what we're supposed to do. We didn't execute, and we had some missed assignments and some things like that, which was frustrating. Um, you know, you always like to win, and you always love to see the kids happy about it. But, you know, on my ride home, I was thinking about what could we have done better. And uh, But the turnover battle is absolutely key. That's what we talk about all the time. And uh, to get four and then not give any away, typically – uh, you're going to be on the su successful end of that situation. So that was good. Um, but we had some penalties that put us behind the sticks. And just, you know, it was not a real clean game. Um, you know, yeah, fourth down conversions, three for three was great. Um, but um, but we got to get better. We had too many mistakes and didn't execute well enough offensively. No, everybody's got to execute. You know, we got to put it all together in every phase. That's the goal. Uh, but each week's a new week. But defensively, we've been flying around, uh, running to the ball, tackling pretty well. 
um, that back last week from San Jose, he's a good back. He's a physical back, and he broke some tackles. But um, uh, defense did a good job. We're hustling. We're running. And, uh, you know, and that's impressive. That We're always going to put ourselves in a position to do things if we just pay attention to the details and we hustle and we tackle properly. You know, because when you run, you put yourself in a position to be around the ball. And so... If we continue to practice like that, then, you know, I think our defense would be fine. Um, but this week is a whole new challenge. New Mexico brings a whole different animal in here. You know, it's the, the option and the way that they run it is very difficult. Well, it's it's not the typical dive option. It's read option. You know, they got a lot of, a lot of moving pieces to it. They're very fast with what they do. Um, they get you in space a lot. You know, so schematically looking at it on tape, you know, yes, they do a great job. But, again, it's just hard to practice it. You know, it's not what you see every week. And so do we have an option quarterback on this team that's going to give us a look there in this week? You know, those type of things. Um, it's a read situation, you know. So we don't have somebody in our team that's used to reading it and doing it and running the option and all that kind of stuff. So how we practice and how we prepare and how we get our scout teams ready to go is really critical this week. We're thinking about it right now. Yeah, we're looking at um, all the options of whether it's a receiver or a running back or what have you. Uh, that will do it. It won't be a quarterback. It will definitely be another position, a skilled position that, that can run. Juju has been really solid. I'm really happy for him. I just heard about that and uh, well deserved. Uh, he's been playing very solid all year. Um, he's been very coachable. Uh, he tackles well, uh, reading his keys. Uh, great interception last week, um, run under the ball, practices hard every day, paying attention to all the little things. So it's nice to see uh, that pay off for him because he's come a long way. Him being a Valley guy too, I'm sure guys from Hanford and all around know who he is. Um, what does that mean to have a guy like that that stayed home and, and continue to build the Valley guys? Well, it's always nice to see the local kids who come have success. Um, Great to see any of our kids have success, but um, I think the local products who, who come here and see that they can accomplish their goals and have success here I think is a big deal as our, our focus in recruiting is to make sure that we take care of our backyard first. And so it's nice to see the, the local guys have success like that and be honored with a player of the week. Just con still continue to grow. You know, I think I think Ronnie's got a really bright future. But all those young backs are both, I should say, both those young backs, Mims and, and Rivers both. I think every time they hit the game field, it's a learning experience for them. And they come away thinking maybe I could do this different or that different. And whether I can close a cushion or make my move now or make my move then or how they see blitz pick up and just everything. You know, each week for a freshman that the game's moving pretty fast. Uh, each time out is a great opportunity for them to grow and learn in every phase of their game, whether it be blocking, whether it be uh, running with the football, whether it be route catching, route running, whatever it may be. Uh, all of it's a learning experience. So they're just going to continue to grow. What are the intangibles that Ronnie Rivers brings, though? He has great uh, football instincts. It comes really natural to him. You know, you can you can explain something on the board with him and he can go on the field and get it done the first time where not everyone can do that. You know, they need reps on the field. Uh, but Ronnie has a really good feel for the game and uh, and an understanding and things make sense to him. He has savvy, he has football savvy and instincts to where, you know, he, it just comes naturally. He catches the ball really naturally. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things that he really does well. And, uh, you know, as he grows here in the weight room and gets more explosive and all that, you know, I think he has a really bright future.
Well, you know, they want to lead, obviously, with the run, and they can all do that. Um, but they can all throw it well enough to get the ball down the field. And that's the thing, you know, they're going to catch a sleep and overplay into the run and try to hit big plays. And all of them can do that, you know. So we have to prepare for their scheme and not so much for an individual player. And the scheme is going to obviously um, get, make us work hard this week. I mean, really be on top of our game. And uh, whichever quarterback plays, we got to play their offensive scheme and make sure that we're sound and our eyes are right and our eyes are disciplined on what we're doing. We don't go to sleep and let them get a big play. Is that when you have a situation like that where it's all about assignment football, you've been playing a defense with a lot of substitutions, especially in the front four. Is that a situation where it's harder to go that deep and have all those guys stay assignment first? No, I, I think our, our coaches do a good job of, of uh, getting these guys prepared to play. And uh, there's, you know, we're really fortunate. There's not a huge drop off, but when we substitute guys uh, out, and so you know, the the rules have to be simple, and we'll get enough reps with it this week to get those guys. That's how we practice. Is we get a lot of reps in practice, you know, so it's it's pretty much simulating a game, and uh, you know, so those guys will get you know plenty of reps to get it done. But it's it's important that everybody pays attention to what's going on because it's a real detail oriented week for sure this week because if you miss an assignment it's going to cost you. Coach, what do you think of Marcus's play on Saturday? Marcus uh, did all right. Didn't turn a football over which is key um, but I think um, admittedly he would say that he could have made a few throws that uh, that he missed. And, uh, you know, but again, every week's a different defense and what you're going to see and, and bring different things with blitz packages and so on and so forth. Um, thought he did a good job of getting us in protections that we needed to get protected. But there was just a couple balls there that that uh, that he could have hit. You know, I think Rice down the middle was an easy throw that he overthrew. Uh, Mims in the flat on the third down that would have been an easy throw, first down that he missed. You know, so things like that. But... Uh, you know, I, I think he was probably trying a little too hard, trying to throw it a little too hard and was erratic, but um, did a lot of good things as well, you know. So uh, he'll continue to improve, I'm sure. As far as the playbook, you throw the heat all the way caught up. Obviously, you started a little later. You guys put the whole playbook over with him? Yeah, well, the whole playbook is just um, specific to the game plan. You know, you never take your whole playbook into a game plan. That would be impossible to practice all those plays or to run all those plays. So uh, conceptually, yes, uh, I think he understands that. Now, by what formations we do things and whether it's motions or shifts or whatever goes on and how to manage that uh, and see the moving parts, that's a whole different story. Uh, but he's a, you know, he's experienced player. You know, he understands things and sees rotation and, and things like that. So it's not real new to him, it's just how what the challenges are each week with what teams bring and how we pick up pressures and and you know how we do the things that we do things you know there's a it's a fraction of the playbook that goes into a to a whole game you know when he can concentrate on that then he's fine I don't know. You know, I know he's a, he's a character kid and he's very tough and, and highly competitive, so it doesn't surprise me that he's worked hard to get back there. You know, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know the extent of the injury or whatever, but I'm sure they'll take good care of him. But if there's anybody or anything he can do, uh, I'm sure he's spending a ton of time, you know, in the, um, in the treatment center and doing all that kind of stuff, doing every possible thing he can do to get back. That's what I would anticipate from him. You know, but um, sometimes things need to heal, you know, so, um, but I know it won't be, it wouldn't be from lack of trying to get it done and effort to get it done. I hope so. I mean, I hope uh, it being homecoming, I hope, um, you know, that with each week that goes that, um, you know, fans get into it and create that advantage for us. And, you know, third down is good. You know, on first and second down, it would be great to put a little pressure on the opposition. And, uh, you know, but we'll just do our job. And uh, I appreciate everyone who comes out to the game and um, just, 
you know, we have to do our job to make sure that they can get into it and stuff like that, which I think will continue to grow, you know, because I know what that stadium can be and has been. And, um, you know, our goal is to get it back there uh, the way it has been in the past and and get the fans uh, really excited and create a create an environment in there that makes it really tough on our opposition. No, loud crowds. All I mean, there's snap counts. You have to snap the ball, you know. And so there's commu- anytime there's communication. I don't care if it's in the huddle, you know. Even if you're in the huddle, and you're trying to talk to your team in the huddle, and it's loud and people can't hear, you're always, you know, that has an effect. Cadence at the line of scrimmage, you know, has an effect. If you can get got people to jump off sides, and now they're behind the sticks. You know, it's first and fifteen instead of first and ten, or you know, second fifteen to the second ten. That always helps, you know. And and you know, there's there's a reason why when you go to other places, you practice with noise. You for you know, we go to loud places. We practice with noise because we know it can be a distraction. It forces teams to prepare for it, and uh, and it's tough, you know. And and so hopefully we can get to that point sometime. Yeah, timing timing's key with it, you know, no doubt. Um, but communication is is the biggest thing with in football. There's communication every single play, whether it's a center to the guard, the guard to the tackle, who's on, who's off the ball, you know, what's going on, you know, what is the snap count, all that. Communication is key, and um, you know, so any any time you can have an effect on communication. That makes it tough on the offense. And when we go on the road, we always have to practice with noise uh, because of that, you know. And and uh, we have to work really hard on making sure that we communicate, uh, be it verbally or non-verbally, and how you snap the ball and you know those type of things. So uh, it makes it makes you when you go on the road, it really makes you work hard on that if you're going into a hostile environment. Well, you're right, Paul. It's uh, you know we talked about their offense, but their defense is very aggressive. They fly around. They do a nice job. They're they get after you. Um, they play really, really hard. You know they run to the ball. When I look at them on defense, they look a lot like us running to the football. They give great effort, and um, they have a good secondary. Um, they have uh, variations of blitzes that come after you and all that kind of thing. So they're a very aggressive defense and. Um, you know, one of the top five in the conference, and and uh, they do a really good job. So um, it's in all phases. That's why I said, you know, we talk about offense, but all phases of the game, we need to get, we need to play our A game. You know, because these guys will bring it. They're a very good football team in all areas. And you gave them some extra film to guide Jess in the Wildcat and had some success with. And then uh, your heavy package with the six offensive linemen, some extra tight ends. Coach Hill was saying that's your version of the key heavy. Yeah, well, it's it is a little bit like that, and you know, jumbo. You know, we have a lot of personnel packages uh, that would put a person in for at a certain position. Um, so we have a lot of those that, that go on, whether it's an extra lineman or whether it's um, whether it's the wildcat formation or whatever. Um, but Coach DeBoer does a really good job, and and uh, Coach Grubb do a great job of of dialing that stuff up and um you know players do a good job of executing it you know um of learning it and practicing it and and uh, so yeah we've we put some things on tape that people need to prepare for for sure and we do it pretty fast you know so it's not like you know they see it coming we we try to do it fast and what coach hill's talking about is how we broke the huddle really fast because that was the key to t heavy was get them in get them out get them off that was coach sweeney's um, lingo all the time with T heavy, and so um, that's what we tried to do last week. We were pretty successful with it on on short yard situations. And that's probably the most you pushed tempo wise so far this year. How would you feel about the way you guys were able to speed things up a little bit and, and really get the best you had? 
It was fine. Yeah, I thought we did a good job. And that's one of those things, you know, putting it on Marcus again and putting it on everyone to get set. And uh, we're in and out of tempo all the time in every game. Uh, but we did a little bit more this week, and uh, I thought the guys handled it well. Got a couple signals wrong, which was that was kind of frustrating that we're throwing a certain route and the other guy and the receiver's running a different route, and that comes with communication. But, um, but no, I thought they handled the tempo just fine. Thank <laughs> you.